Welcome back to the Single Dad Online Podcast, Online Dad, and I am the Online Dad. Well, Christmas 2020 is here, or you can call it Christmas COVID style, however you want to label it. It is another that time of year with the holiday season. And with uh, COVID this year, um, the angst and the stress levels of the holiday season are probably higher than they've ever been for a myriad of reasons. The primary reason, over 221,000 to date have died from COVID-19, which means there's a lot of moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles who will not be celebrating the holidays with their families. <sighs> Emotional trauma and emotional loss is one of the things that get heightened during um, the holiday season. So whether you are a single dad for the first time or you have been a single dad for a number of years, you can relate to when the holiday seasons come, how some of that pain from uh, that loss uh, tends to be um, magnified because of the holiday season. I remember when I became a single dad, uh, my girlfriend was pregnant. I knew there was a baby coming. I felt completely overwhelmed and unprepared in that alone. But then after my son was born, um, I did not marry his mother. I found when the holiday seasons came, continued to keep me feeling overwhelmed and, and underprepared for the holiday season. So my mom and dad got divorced when I was 10 years old, and and uh, and I remember all of those things that changed within um, my life when my parents had split. But I also remember my mother trying to make the holiday season uh, enjoyable and memorable. And I really don't have any huge negative memories of the holiday season other than uh, there was a lot of traveling involved because the holiday season was spent going from my mom's house to my dad's house to my dad's uh, parents' house or my grandparents and then back home to go to my other grandparents' uh, house for the holiday season. But I don't have any horrible memories of the holiday season just being the worst thing on the planet. So I, I just I, I called my mom and I asked her, I said, how did you manage to pull the holidays off year after year after the divorce? And she said that, you know, my brothers and me may not remember uh, the first few years after the divorce, but she said the holidays were very stressful for her. And keep in mind, she loved the holiday season. She just, um, I always called Christmas her high holy day. She just loved Christmas, just loved it. So uh, she said, she, she said to me, the divorce was the right thing to do, but hated the new life that she, that has been now carved out especially when Christmas time came and she struggled to keep the smile on her face. Since Christmas represented a time of family and celebration, and if you're watching the Hallmark Channel or Lifetime, you get even more frustrated because they make these you know, feel-good movies, which is what they're designed to do, but you feel anything but good about the holiday season. She also told me that more than anything, she wanted the holidays to be special for my brothers and me. She reminded me back in the 1970s, there were very few resources out there since society still really frowned on divorce at the time. And it's not that they, they say it's okay to do it now. It's just that the resources out there available for single parents just, just didn't exist. Um, so for mom, it was trial and error. And she said she very slowly started to come up with strategies to help make Christmas special for not only her children, but all of us. And I would say up to the time of her death in 2013, uh, each Christmas was special, unique, filled with traditions. And, and the first Christmas after she passed away, now my mom remarried um, back in 91, and then she tried to create new Christmases that included a blended family and the little bumps in the road that went with that. So that first Christmas after her death, my stepfather said, you know, I, I'd like to decorate the house the same way we used to always decorate it. So the family rallied, came in, you know, the children, the spouses, uh, our children um, came in and decorated the house the way it was always decorated for the 24 years uh, in the house that, that uh, they had lived in. And the meal was the same, and my sister in laws and the granddaughters and the, and the, we all just kind of you know took our our, uh, our our duties to make sure that the dinner was pretty much identical, same dishes, everything. 
But we also had a huge reality check of just how special she made those holidays for all of us. Um, filled with traditions, uh, family time, discussion. The house was beautifully decorated. And, uh, and just all the work that went involved to try and create it. And then the reality that now that she was gone, that we were taking those traditions and incorporating them into our holiday season and celebrating that with our, 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 our children. And now for me, I have grandchildren. But remember that the holiday season heightens that feeling of, of loss and stress and angst. And, and today, 7 out of 10 children live in families impacted by some sort of emotional trauma, uh, either by death or divorce, separation, abandonment of one or both parents. And as I said before, because of COVID-19, um, it, it's, it's even worse. For children and adults, the holidays have a heightened sense of loss, even if it's been years since you you became a single dad. uh, The child's pain can be intense uh, this time of year on many different levels. And despite any emotional or financial difficulties, single dads, you can make a difference um, in the holiday season for your children. Trial and error. Um... You know what worked, what didn't work. Hey, we can modify this. Are there anything that I can do to try and make it better the following year? And you know what? And it's okay to engage your children in that after the holiday season is over. Say, hey, you know what? What did you like about the holiday season, and what could we do to make it better? So my mom passed on to me some strategies for giving uh, for her her children um, the holiday season as best as she could do. And as she used to call it, the gift of love. So I'm going to pass on some of those strategies that she had given me, as well as some of the things that I have learned over the years. So the first recommendation or strategy is acknowledge your loss. In the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, take time to talk about the you know the parent that's passed away, talk about the divorce, discuss some of the changes that have occurred because mom and dad are no longer together. Ask the children how they feel, and most importantly, listen. Listen to what they have to say. It's not a um, don't be defensive. It's not a list of excuses and why they happened the way they did. You need to listen. So, and as you listen, and sometimes it might be negative, encourage positive reminiscences. Think about the good things that happened in the past. You will enhance that true meaning of the season for your children and start building good memories for them to starting to enjoy in the future. Keep in mind acknowledging that loss. Yeah, you know what? There might be some tears. There might be some anger. There might be some frustration. Um, That's all part of it. And as the parent, you just have to listen. Uh, Don't deflect blame. Don't pass the blame. Just listen. It's how they're thinking and feeling. And even though it might be unrealistic, you've got to listen. It also helps them to work through that grief process of their loss by being able to communicate what they're thinking and feeling. So acknowledge that loss. And it's not that you pick a day like you do on an advent calendar and say, okay, today we're going to talk about it. You will know when the time is right to talk about it. And you might see a look on your children's face that might precipitate that discussion. And remember when you acknowledge the loss, it's important for you on an age-appropriate level to acknowledge how you're thinking and feeling. Because once they see that you're willing to share with them some of those personal feelings, they may they just go, oh, all right, well, dad's sharing it, so it must be okay. And then they start building that trust. Because right now there's not a lot of trust with adults right now because they're hurting. So make sure that you are age appropriate and uh, giving them only information that they need. Uh, you know, details and the nitty and the gritty you really don't need to give your kids. It's A, none of their business. And B, you know, they don't need to know that. It's all adult stuff that doesn't need to be discussed. The second recommendation I'm going to have is anticipate those potential difficult moments. And a lot of times that happens when the family gets together. So you need to make sure that you have talked to every family member that uh, you're going to see over the holiday season and make sure that everyone understands the children and family ties are the focus of us getting together for the holidays. And if there's any bitterness because of the, the, the separation or the divorce or the death, especially um, you need to make sure that those, those clear-cut ground rules are established up front so there's no name-calling, there's no argument, there's no taking sides or verbal bashing 
um, of family members or whomever. It, 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 that's not what it is at the dinner table. It's bad enough when we have to talk about politics at the dinner table. We don't need to have those discussions. And with COVID-19 right now and, and our holidays having to be modified because of the, of the virus, uh, we're already stressed out that we're not going to be able to see some of our family members for the holiday season. And so instead of maybe a family of 10, it's a family of three with a Zoom call later. And that even creates more stress and the potential for more arguments and disagreements because we're already angry and frustrated that we can't see the people we want to see for the holiday season. The next suggestion is be conscious of your own feelings. Your attitude set the tone for your children. Your children are always watching you. And if you have any type of undercurrent of animosity or anxiety, it's going to torpedo the holidays and blow them to bits for your children. So always try to see how those things play through their eyes and put their emotional needs first. And, and I've said more times than I can count, you know, it's not about you. It's about your children. It's not saying we're, your, your emotions are not important, but remember you're the parent and we're trying to uh, create new memories and we're trying to set the example. Doesn't mean you guys can't have discussions afterwards. Doesn't mean you're not going to have fights at some point. But if you're already feeling angry and frustrated, uh, you might be out of a job right now uh, and you don't have the money you normally have to make the holiday special and you're scrambling to try and make the holiday special because the money's just not there. Uh, however your feelings are, when it's time uh, to ho- the, for the holidays to happen, just be aware of your own feelings. If you're not feeling 100% happy, that's okay. That's okay. But just keep in mind that might do other things to the day when you're with your kids. Plan your holiday celebrations. So divorce, separation, death, always complicate the holidays with special events. COVID-19, again, going to complicate the holiday celebrations. But with your children, decide how and with whom your family are going to observe the holiday in advance. And I know it's say, hey, it's only the early part of December. I, you know, I figure out who's coming later. Especially with COVID, you can't do that now. You really need to start talking about those plans of who's coming and who's not coming. Um, with visitation schedules, uh, that also can be complicated. And I've always tried to look at visitation schedules as a guideline of when you should try and schedule your visits. But don't hold strong and fast to it. Easier said than done. Um, but don't be afraid to suggest a modification to the holiday schedule. And, and, and you remember, it's, it's about your children's needs, not about yours. And yeah, you want to see your kids on the holidays. And yeah, that's your time to be with them. And I'm already having a crummy holiday season and I want to be able to see my kids. But you want to schedule those holiday visits and get togethers with the children in mind. Don't try and rush them from one house to the other because you have to visit with them. It might be. Maybe Christmas Eve is the day you celebrate it. Maybe the day after Christmas. And um, or, and if you do do it on Christmas Day, have clear cut, hey, you know what? From 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they're going to be here. And then from 4 o'clock on and overnight, they're going to be at the other parent's house. However you do it, plan those celebrations. The holidays tend to throw... Uh, uh, bumps in the roads anyway under normal circumstances. So you want to make sure at at the very least you have uh, down how the holidays are going to be celebrated once they come. The next suggestion is that a family discuss your old and new traditions. Healthy families change. I mean, we all change our traditions as we get older, kids grow up, we get grandkids in the mix, uh, there's a move involved. That's all part of the holidays change. So now with you've got uh, a you know, single parent uh, situation here this year, talk to your children about the new ways you can observe the holidays. What new traditions can you build? What uh, old traditions can you modify? Can you rekindle some sort of commitment to you and your children by engaging them in that discussion? And you'd be surprised at what you come up with. And some of those new traditions, you might not be able to execute them all. It it just, it may not be realistic. But then maybe with your kids discuss, hey, let's pick two of these and see what we can do about them. And then the following year, you can do the same thing. You can say, you know, okay, we did this this year. What do we want to try and do next year? New traditions don't have to be expensive or elaborate. I remember the, the, the one first Christmas without my dad, my mom decided to buy our first ever live tree. Uh, my, my parents ended up having an artificial tree because live trees tend to be very expensive. 
And by buying an artificial tree, it's one expense, and then you use it year after year. It's not a bad thing. It just it was just a way to try and save some money. So that first year of my parents, the uh, first Christmas after my parents' divorce, she wanted to go get a live tree. All my mom could afford at the time was a seven dollar scrawny pine tree. Bought uh, from, I believe it was Builder Square, several missing limbs. It was a little bit of lopsided stem, but it's all we could afford. And my mom always affectionately called it the, our first Charlie Brown tree. But I remember being excited about it. Uh, the live tree traditions continued uh, from, from when my parents split in 1975. Um, through actually 2011 when my parents got up there in age, just before my mom passed away, and just felt it was too stressful, so she started getting a, an artificial tree to make it easier. But I will also say to you, as an adult, I have a live tree in my house now. So she continued that life tradition. It was just exciting. It was a new way for her to build a new tradition um, post her divorce. While the live trees were large and more full in previous years, I still have fond memories of that Charlie Brown tree after that first year. Uh, another suggestion is be realistic about your own capabilities. As a single dad, you can't do everything. You, you can't. Prior to, uh, prioritize your family needs. Make choices. Explain your decisions to your children. It's okay to say you don't have the energy, you don't have the money, you don't have the time off work uh, to make six dozen cookies and, and, and see half a dozen movies. It, it just... It, it just there's no time. Ask the children. Ask your children what they want to do most. You might be surprised at their answers. The most important memory you can give your children this holiday is a season and time spent together, not the amount of time together, but what you do with the time when you are together. But it, the holiday season can put unrealistic uh, expectations at times. You have to acknowledge your own limitations. Another suggestion is decide how you'll spend your free time. You may find that in the first years as a single dad, you and your children uh, are not with you. You may find you spend hours sitting on the couch and staring at the trees, uh, watching mindless television and devastated that you're alone. Start making plans when you're not with your children, especially during the holiday season. Various ideas can start from serving Christmas dinner at homeless shelters, go through your closets, go to a movie. Um, yeah, and believe it or not, you can't handle going to a movie alone. Now, with COVID and the movie theaters not open, there are other things you can do. You can go drive in different towns that have uh, Christmas lights or go through neighborhoods, put the Christmas music on in your car, and just drive through those neighborhoods. For me... I took Christmas Eve because that was usually the day that I didn't have uh, Tommy with me, my son with me. And I used to take Christmas Eve and I turned on some of my favorite Christmas movies. I, you know, Bill Murray, Scrooge, Christmas Vacation, uh, Four, uh, Four Christmases. I mean, there, just, there were a ton out there. I ordered a pizza, got a bone for my dog, and I wrapped gifts. And it was, it was great. I would bet your friends and family know that you're alone and probably will extend invitations for you to join them. If you want to join them, great. And if you don't want to join them, and, and, and you, that's okay too. But plan that time. Don't sit there and wallow in the self-pity. It's okay to feel bad for yourself. But to sit there day after day saying, poor me, poor me, poor me, is not going to help the attitude. So you've got to get up and you've got to move. All right. Um, Reach out to your children before the holidays festivities start at their mom's. Wish them a Merry Christmas. Keep it upbeat and positive with the reassurance that you'll see them soon. Um, j just get busy and do not feel sorry for yourself. Your kids will know it and they will feel guilty if they're apart from you. Yes, you can say you'll miss them, but, but don't, don't make it a, a guilt trip. Just like keep it easy breezy to, hey, we'll see you whatever day you're going to see him for the holiday season. It might be on Christmas. It might be the day after Christmas. Just keep it upbeat and positive. And if you don't get to see him on Christmas Day, send him a text. Send him a quick call to wish him a Merry Christmas and just say, hey, I'm looking forward to it. The presents are under the tree. Santa's been here. They're all waiting for you. As your family celebrates the holiday this year, remember you are creating memories for your children. Keep them warm, loving, happy. Um, and the, the ones that you want to repeat that have children. A lot of times when you're running this marathon and raising your kids, uh, you want to keep those memories at the forefront, those, those, um, 
landmark celebrations. You know, parenting is part of preparation for your kids to become adults, and they'll remember some of those things, but they're, they're going to remember those fun and loving um, times you made, certain times of year special for them. It, it's, it's in your court to make it work or make it uh, not to work. And with your children, you want to say, do you want to spend the next several holiday seasons uh, making it a horrible, evil holiday because I can't get what I want? And then your children sniping at each other and you just let them plug themselves in front of their phones or their tablets or their games while you go do whatever you need to do, watch TV. That's not what the holidays are about. Uh, Avoidance is not going to work. So embrace it uh, and do what you can to try and make the holidays special for yourself and more importantly, special for your children. The last thing I'm going to leave with you is if you are dating or in the process of dating, be careful when you make that introduction of your new girlfriend um, or partner into the relationship. And the holidays may not always be the time to do it. So you need to think that through. For you, it might be an exciting time for, for your children to meet, meet them, meet that special person in your life. And, uh, but if they're struggling with the divorce or the, the, the new loss, or the loss themselves, sometimes that can create a little bit more resentment. So think that through. If it's somebody that they've already met and somebody that they have interacted with, then again, just include it in part of those plans. So there's a few things for you to look at, some things to think of. I'll have a couple more podcast recommendations for the holiday seasons coming up. But I wanted to get you started. Get you started in thinking about your holiday season, whether your tree is up already and the house is already decorated or you're dreading having to do it. Just keep in mind, we as parents have to start focusing on what we want to build as great memories for our children. So that being said, I just wanted to remind you that you are an awesome dad and your children do love you unconditionally. Remember, it's not about the amount of money you spend at the holiday season. It's not about uh, keeping it fun 24-7. It's about being with your children. You love them unconditionally. They love you unconditionally. And you want to make those holidays um, about that, not about the number of toys or competing with uh, your ex on the amount of toys you're being bought. And I'll do a whole other podcast. podcast later regarding um, other strategies for the holiday seasons to kind of keep things on track. So with that being said, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday Season, and we'll talk to you soon. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? 